Okay, so this is what our threat tree looks like so far. What else do we have as ways to potentially attack the protected range registers? Let's assume that the BIOS maker set flock down, so now the attacker needs a new way around. Well, the next thing is that they could potentially exploit protected range register misconfiguration. And the defense for that is that the BIOS vendor needs to very carefully analyze their range coverage and make sure that it is actually correct. So an example of this would be that uh, in the Thunderstrike 2 work, we had looked at some Apple systems trying to understand what applied and what didn't. And we looked to try to understand whether Speed Racer, which was a uh, race condition vulnerability applied, and it didn't exactly apply because the thing that it bypassed was just straight up not there. But there were protected range registers, and there were two gaps in the protected range register regions, one of which covered the EFI variables, and the other just covered who knows what. And UEFI tool called it padding, but, you know, we really can't say what that was. So the interesting thing was that, you know, if we smashed all of this, there was no problem there. Apple actually designs their systems to be able to reset all of the EFI variables. Uh, they actually have a command shortcut that you can, you know, hold as you're booting the system and it'll zap the NVRAM, zap the PRAM back in the uh, PowerPC days, back in the open firmware days. So they're designed against uh, defense against that. So they don't really care if that goes away. Now, most BIOS vendors, if you zap their variables, they're almost certainly going to break, but not Apple. But zapping this actually led to just straight up breaking the system. The system would not boot anymore. And so that became, you know, a sort of permanent DOS attack, which again, we said is going to be extremely difficult to recover from if someone gets hit from that. So this essentially is a research opportunity for those of you out there who want to go off and do work in this area. So you can analyze whether or not a vendor has protected range register set. That's easy. You know, we'll see that with chipset. But analyzing whether or not the range is correct is an entirely different matter. You have to understand what sort of code and data is covered or not covered. So I think there's plenty of opportunities for research in that particular area. Well, let's assume that they had done their due diligence and carefully analyzed and covered the correct ranges. What else could an attacker do? Well, they could use sleep-wake vulnerabilities, but we're not going to talk about that until later in the class. But I'll just say as a, as a call forward, sleep-wake vulnerabilities can actually just straight up unset the protected range registers. They just magically go away. So that's pretty interesting. What else could an attacker do if they wanted to bypass protected range registers? Well, they could exploit a normal memory corruption vulnerability in the BIOS before the lock is set, before the lockdown is set. So basically, as the code is running in the BIOS at early boot time, there has to be some period of time between reset, when the locks come unlocked, and the code executing and locking things down. So in that time window, if there is any attacker-controlled inputs introduced into the system that can cause a typical memory corruption vulnerability, well, then if the attacker gets arbitrary code execution before this gets set, then of course they can you know, just ensure that that never gets set whatsoever and rewrite the BIOS. So the defense against that is, you know, just audit all attack surfaces exposed before the lock is set and remove all the vulnerabilities. Sounds easy, right, Corey? And the mitigation for that is the typical exploit mitigations, things like stack cookies, non-executable heap and stack and so forth. So this is what our threat tree looks like specifically for protected range registers as a defensive mechanism. So in summary, I believe that PRRs and Flockdown is the most important strategy for locking down the BIOS. It's really the most powerful one that can't just be worked around and doesn't have an extra large attack surface on it like the next one that we're going to learn about. Because without protected range registers, you would have to rely on this next one, which depends on system management mode, and system management mode has a very large attack surface. It's important to know that protected range registers are more strict than other things. So things like flash, flash master permissions from the optional material about the flash descriptor, the protected range trumps those. So even if the flash master says that something is allowed to read or write somewhere, if the protected range says no, then it means they're not allowed to. But there's an interesting little side effect to the idea if the vendor uses protected range registers, it's going to actually make them have to do firmware updates, BIOS updates after reset because they set these registers and then they lock them down and then the register doesn't come unlocked until the system resets. So otherwise, how are you going to do a BIOS update? You have to wait until you reset 
and then the existing BIOS has to take a BIOS update payload and apply that and write it down to the flash chip before the flash becomes locked again. So that makes the flash update process itself become an interesting attack surface in the context of the window of time in which uh, the flash is unlocked. So let's go back to our threat diagram here for a second. And so I said, oh, just, you know, exploit the BIOS before a lock is set. And you might have thought to yourself, oh, that's dumb. Like, why would they be consuming any attacker controlled data before the lock is set? Well, one example of why they would have to consume attacker controlled data would be the BIOS update itself, because it must be processed before the lock is set. And it can be extremely complicated as you know, my colleague Corey showed when he has presented multiple uh, attacks using the BIOS update process in order to exploit a BIOS and consequently take over. Now at the end of the day, only a BIOS vendor themselves can really reliably determine whether or not it's safe to cover everything or not cover everything with protected range registers. That's why I said, you know, this is a interesting area potentially for research. And in general, when you start looking at protected ranges, you will see quickly that there's going to be gaps. And there'll be gaps like I showed in that picture for the Apple systems, typically around EFI and VRAM variables. So there's a, typically an expectation that those EFI and VRAM variables are writable at runtime. And so there's an expectation that, for instance, you would update them to say, hey, I want to boot something else. And that would be a boot choice that you would make from within an operating system, potentially, rather than, you know, just sitting in a BIOS configuration screen somewhere. So anything that needs to be runtime writable, by definition, cannot be covered by protected range registers. Beyond that, BIOSes, unfortunately, just keep getting bigger over time, and that means the range that needs to be covered over time needs to expand, and who knows, they might, you know, leave a protected range that doesn't cover the full range once the BIOS expands and, you know, grows by 4 kilobytes, for instance.